say that was not against the rules?
Outwardly ye shall. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail, 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 lesser than Macbeth and greater, not 
not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get king, though thou be none. So, all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. I know I am Thane of Gloms, but how of Caldor, the Thane of Caldor lives. And to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Caldor. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence, and why? Upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greetings. Speak, I charge you! <laughs> The earth hath bubbles, as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? Into the air. And what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind. Would they had stayed? Were such things here, as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane root that takes the reason prisoner? <laughs> Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor too, went it not so? The <laughs> self-same tune and word. Who's here? God save the king. The, the king. king. The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Hence why we are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor. In which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What, can the devil speak true? The Thane of Codmore lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under a heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. His treason's capital confessed and prove hath overthrown him. Our king hath begun to plant thee, and will labor to make thee full of growing. And to that end he sends us. Hide thee home to Inverness, for the king doth keep his rebels there tonight. What? Shall we be merry? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that would draw three souls from one weaver, huh? Shall we do that? I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take our leave. Cousins, let us toward the king! Hey! Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the thane of Codmore to me promised no less to them? This is strange. And oftentimes, to win us to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. Win us with honest trifles to betray us in deepest consequence. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time, the interim, having weighed it, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Lums, as Thane of Cawdor. The greatest is behind. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill. Oh, it cannot be good. <laughs> if ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. Good. Why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise and nothing is but what is not. Chance will have me, King, why chance may crown me without my stir. Come what come may, time and the hour run through the roughest day. <clears throat> they met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cawdor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with... Hail, king that shalt be! 
This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou might not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Gloms thou art, and Cador, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou oh, wouldst be great. Art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily. Wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thoughtst have great gloms, that which cries, thus thou must do if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do, than wishest should be undone. Hide me hither, that I may pour my spirit in thy ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from this golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? King comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who word so would have it formed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our queen is coming. The raven himself is the horse that cloaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here, and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop of the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breast, and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substance you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes. Nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great gloms, worthy Cawdor, you're in the boat, buddy, all hail you! <laughs> My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. You want to go ten? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. What face, my fame, is as a book where men may read strange matters. <laughs> To beguile the time, look like the time. Fair welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall for all our days and nights to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further when we look up clear altered favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me.
If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could tremel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success that but this blow might be the be all and the end all here. But here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. But in these cases we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions which being taught return to plague the inventor. Oh, he's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against the murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this great Duncan hath borne his faculty so meek, been so clear in his great office that his virtues will cleave like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or, or heaven's cherubim, horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the wind. I have no spur to break the sides of my intent, only vaulting ambition which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, what news? He is almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? Know you not he has? We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me as of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteem'st the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat of the adage? Prithee, peace. I dare do all that may become a man, who dares do more is none. What beast was to them that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. If and to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does not make you. I have given suck. And know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail, we fail. But screw your courage to the sticky place, we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that in a swinish sleep they'll lie as in a death. Then what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber with their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive? other as we shall make our griefs and clamors roar upon his death. I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. The false face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take it as later, father. Hold. Thank 
be that. With husbandry in heaven, the candles are all out. Summoned last night's letter upon me, and yet, not sleep. Voices of power, strain in me the cursed thought that nature can be waiting in repose. Who's there? Unusual pleasure and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became the servant to defect which else should free have wrought. Ugh. <laughs> All's well. I dreamt last night of three weird sisters. Do you they have shows them true? I think not of them. Yet, when we could entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words. Upon that business, if you would grant the time. <laughs> if you shall cleave to my consent when tis, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my book and franchise and allegiance clear, I shall be counseled. Good repose the while! <laughs> Daggers which I see before me, the handle toward my hands. Come, we clutch thee. Have thee not, and yet I see thee still. Are thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? Thou marshest me the way that I was going. Such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses. Or else for all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade in Dutch and gouts of blood, which was not so before, there's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs us to mine eyes. Now more the one half world nature sees dead. Wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings and withered murder. With Tarquin's ravishing strides towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou sure and firm set earth, you're not my steps. Which way they walk for fear thy very stones prayed of my whereabouts. While thy threat he lives, words to the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell. Summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me gold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark. Peace. It was the owl that shrieked. The fatal bellman. drugged their possets that death and nature do contend about them whether they should live or die. Who's there? I know. 
Alas, I am afraid they have a weight, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband? I have done the deed. There's some not hear a noise. I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now. As I just said, I. hark! Who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. <laughs> this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. There's one that laughs in sleep, and one cried murder, but they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. One cried, God bless us, and on them the other. If they had seen me with these hangman's hands, they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. I could not say amen to me to say God bless us. Consider it not so But deep. wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. He thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep then, knits up the raveled sleeve of care. Death of each day's life, sore labor's bath, balm of hurt mind. Great nature's second course, chief nurse in life's feast. What do you mean? Still it cried, sleep no more! To all the house, clogs have murdered sleep, and therefore Condor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. For a purpose, give me the daggers. Sleeping. And the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? How is it with me that every noise appalls me? What hands are here? I pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? No. This my hand will rather the multitude in his season carnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of the deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, more knocking. Go, get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deeds were best not know myself. Wake Duncan with thy knocking, I would thou couldst. Knocking has awakened him. Here he comes. Good morrow, <laughs> noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for it is my limited service. <laughs> Go 
knows the king hens today. He does. And to the point so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamenting is heard in the air. Strange screams of death. The obscure bird clamored the livelong night. Some say the earth was feverish and did shake. It was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel fellow to it. Oh, horror. Horror, horror. Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name me. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See and then speak yourselves. Awake. Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donald Malcolm! Awake! Up, up and see this horror! Ring the bell! Malcolm! Banquo! Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. Oh, Banquo. Banquo, our royal master's murdered. What? In our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee contradict thyself and say it is not so. Oh, what is the myth? You are, and do not know it. The spring in the head of the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. By whom? Those of his chamber, as it seems, have done it. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man, the expedition of my violent love outran the pauser reason. Here lie Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make his love known? Oh, what's the lady? Let the way, and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fear and scruples to shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence I fight against treasonous malice. So do I. So, so all. Why do we hold our tongue? What should be spoken here? Our tears are not yet brewed. Not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. All to England. To Ireland, I. Our separate fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles. This murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted. And our safest way is to avoid the aim. There's warrant in that theft, which steals itself, and there's no mercy left. Get up. It's known you did this more than bloody deed. Those that Macbeth hath slain, alas, the day. What good could they pretend? 
They, they were suborned. Uh, the, the king's two sons, Malcolm and Donald Bean, are stolen away in flight, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Oh, how it did grieve Macbeth. Did he not straight the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Wasn't that nobly done? Aye, and wisely too, for it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it. It is unnatural. Even like the deed that's done, then, then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and goes to Schoon to be invested. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin, all, all home to fight. Well, I will then. Well, uh, may you see things well done there. I do. Lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Desired your good advice, but we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? I'm a good lord. As far as we'll fill the time to this and supper, shall not our feast? My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parasite, filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, hide to your horse. Go slay on with you. I'm my good lord. Our time does call upon us. Hmm. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. We will keep ourselves till supper time alone. Wow, then, God be with you. Sirrah, attend to those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. I'll come to them anon. To be thus is nothing! But to be safely thus! Our fears in Banquo stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head, if 
placed a fruitless crown and a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If to be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered, put rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them, to make them kings the seed of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. It is concluded. It must be done tonight. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. You have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. Better be with the dead, whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace, than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Oh, shh. Logan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well, while we, must eat our meals in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. We must leave Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife! Thou knowest that Banquo and his flayons live, so in them nature's copies not a turn. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Ere the bath hath flown his cloister flight, there shall be done a deed of carefulness. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge here struck, till thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hands cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. And the foe makes wing to the rocky wood. Poor things of day begin to droop and drowse, while night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvelst at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So prithee. Go with me. Rain tonight. Let it come down. Oh, Strike out the light. There is one down. The sun is fled. Well, let's away and just say how much is done.
hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart's speech they are welcome. Thanks, Thanks to your majesty. majesty. See, they encounter thee with their hearts. Thanks. Be large in mirth. The non will drink a measure of the table round. There's blood on my face. Tis bank clothes, then. Tis better thee without than thee within. I, my lord, his throat is cut. Else I did wonder him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats! And yet he's good against the life of Leonce. Most royal, sir. Leonce escaped. And comes my foot again. I had else been perfect. Whole as the marble, rounded as the rock. But now I am cabined, cribbed, <laughs> confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo safe? Aye, my lord. Safe in a ditch. Thanks for that. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. May it please your highness sit. Here had we now our country's honor roof. For the grace person of our Banquo present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. <sighs> Which of you have done this? What? Lord. Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. For thee, friends, my, my lord is, is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, he keeps eat. The, the bitch is momentary. Upon a thought, he will again be well. Or you will name. Hi, and a bold one too that looks upon that which might appall the devil. Proper stuff. The very painting of your feet. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces when all's done you look but on a stool? Pretty she there! Look! Lo! Behold! How shame you! What, quite unmanned in folly? If I stand here, I saw him. Hi, for shame. Blood hath been shed ere now. Ay, and since. Too, in the olden time, murders have been performed too terrible for the ear. The times have been that when the brains were out, the man would die. And there an end. But now, now they rise again and push us from our stool. This is more strange than such a murder. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. My most worthy friends, do not muse at me. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Give me some wine. Fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table. And to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss, would he were here. To Banquo! Avant! And quit my sight! Thy bones are marrowless! Thy blood is cold! Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with! Think of this good tears, but as a thing of custom, tis no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the good time. What man dare I dare? Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros or the Syrian tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Hands, horrible shadow! Unreal mockery, hands! Why, so being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth. Broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange. When now I think you can keep the natural ruby of your cheeks and behold such sights, when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? He, he, he grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At, at once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going! 
going, but go at once! Good night, and better help attend his majesty. I'll find the night off. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. What is the night? The moon's at odds with the morning. Which is which? How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it, by the way, but I will send. And I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means, the worst. I am in blood, stepped in so far that should I wait no more, returning were as tedious as go war. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scanned. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, will to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young and rude. Thrice the brindled cat hath mewed, Not. 
Big breath, big breath, big breath. Beware the dust, beware the pain of life. Dismiss me. shall be the firstlings of my hand. And even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise, seize upon Fife, and give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Oh, boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this perfect school. And no more sights. Cuss, I pray you, school yourself. But for your good, Macduff, 
He is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further, but, but cool are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves, when we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear. I take my leave of you. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousins, blessing upon you. Father they are, and yet they are father. I am so much a fool. Should I stay any longer, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I take my leave at once. Sweet ones, your father is dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Our father is not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any market. Was our father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. A traitor. Why one that swears and lies? And be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? But why the honest men? Then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers enough to beat the honest men and hang up them! Oh, oh God help thee for <laughs> monkeys. Yeah. But how wilt thou do for a father? Bless you, for they might have not to you known. If you will take a stranger's poor advice, be not found here. Hence with your little ones. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayst find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shagger villain! What? You ah! egg? Ah! Ah! rather hold fast the mortal sword and, and like good men bestride our downfall and birth them each new morn new widows howl new orphans cry uh, new sorrows strike heaven on the face that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland. what i believe i wail what no believe and what i can redress i will what you have spoken may be so but since my here remain in england I have considered this tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. Uh, I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. 
angels are bright still. Though the brightest fell. Okay, I have lost my hope. Your chance even there where I did find my doubts. Why, in that rawness, left you wife and children? Oh. Those precious motives, those strong knots of love without leave taking. I pray you, let not my jealousies be your dishonors, but mine own safety. Oh, bleed, bleed, poor country. Your great tyranny lay thou thy bases short, for goodness dare not check thee. Wear thou thy wrongs, the title is afeard. Fare thee well, Lord. Yeah, I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp, and the riches to boot. My countrymen, good Ross, the time to rule the means that makes us strangers. Sir, amen. This stand in Scotland, where it did. Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself. It cannot be called our mother, but our grave. Violent sorrow seems a modern ecstasy, and, and good men's lives expire before the flowers in their caps, dying or ere they sicken. H how does my wife? Why, well, and all my children, well too. The tyrant has not battered at their peace. No, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our children fight, to doff their dire distresses. See it, their comfort, we are coming thither. Gracious England hath lent us good General Seward and 10,000 men already at a point in setting forth. Now we'll together. Oh, oh God! God. <laughs> Would I could answer this comfort with the like. But I have words that would be howled out in the desert air, where hearing should not latch them. What, what concern they? Let not your ears despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. <laughs> I guess that. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To relate the manner were to add the death of you. My, my, my children, too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. My, my, my wife killed, too? I have said. Let's take medicines of our great revenge to cure this There is no children! All my pretty chickens? Did you say all? Oh, hell, Kate, all, all my pretty chickens and their damn and what fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. Oh, I shall do so! But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did, did, did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff. They were struck for thee. Not that I am. Not, not for their own demerits, but for mine. Fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Enrage it! Oh, gentle heavens. Cut short all intermission. 
Front to front, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's light set him. And if he escape, heaven forgive him too. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready, our lack is nothing but our deed. If death is ripe for shaking. See what cheer you may. The night is long and never finds the day. I have two nights washed with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went to the field, I have seen her rise from her bed. Her neck and upon her locker closeted, which gave her right constant breathing as were to seal it and again protect it, yet all this while in the most best sleep. A great perturbation in nature. What at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, which I will not report after. But you here she comes. Observe her upon my life fast asleep. How came she by that light? She has light by her continually, says her command. Her eyes are open. Eyes that their sight is shut. What is it she does now? It is an accustomed action with her to see thus washing her hands. I know her to continue this quarter of an hour. Yet here is a spot. Hark, she speaks. Out, damn spot, out, I say! One, two, uh, and then tis time to do it. Thou. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? Do you mark that? The thing of fight that a wife. Where is she now? What will these hands ne'er be clean? No, no more of that, my lord, no more of that. You mar all with this starving. Go to. Go to, you have known what you should she not. She spoke of what she should not. I am sure of that. Yet here is the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia would not sweeten this little hand. What a sigh is there. Now look not so pale, I tell you yet again. Banquo's buried, he cannot come out on screen. Even so. Look at that. There's a knocking at the gate. Come. 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 Give me your hand. Please. This disease is beyond my practice. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Keep eyes upon her. I think, but dare not speak. So good night. Good night, good doctor. The English power is near, led on by Malcolm, the general steward, and good Macduff. What does the title? Great Dunsinane, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that lesser hate him do call it valiant fury. Those he command, only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his saddle hang loose about him like, like a giant roll upon some dwarfish thief? Well, who shall blame his pestered senses to recoil and start when all that is within him doth condemn itself for being there? Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand that Scotland will be safe. God, God save your highness. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let 
every soldier hew down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby we shall shadow the numbers of our hosts and make discovery err and report of us. It shall, shall be, be done. done. Do we but find the tired power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, <laughs> false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. The temple damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon. For God shall that goose look. There are ten thousand. These villain soldiers, sir. What soldiers, Patch? Go prick thy face and overread thy fear. What soldiers way face? The English force so please you. Take thy face hence. Tush will cheer me ever or deceive me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the tears. The yellow leaf. And that it should accompany old age as honor, love, obedience, troops of friends I must not look to have. What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, that was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me my armor. It is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scour the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me my armor. How did you patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind diseased? Pluck from the memory of rooted sorrow, listen she. Leave me, sad stone. Comes the fulsome of that perilous stuff that preys upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw physics to the dogs, I'll none of it. Come, put mine armor on, the cry is still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Come, sir, dispatch. If thou couldst, doctor, cast the water of my land, find the nature of her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo. Off! I say, come after me. I will not be afraid of death and vain till burn forth becomes a dunce name. Ah! What is that noise? It was the cry of women of the Lord. The times have been my senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. I have supped full with horrors. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death out. Out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Gracious, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I stood my watch upon the wall, I looked toward Burnham, and 
Anon, methought the wood began to move. Liar! And slave! Let me endure your wrath, if it be not so. Within this three mile may you see a coming, I say, a moving grove. Arm! Arm and out! If this which ye about just does appear, there's nor flying hence nor tarrying here. I begin to be aweary of the sun, and wish the state of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell! Blow, wind, come, rack! At least we'll die with harness on our back. Served, tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. The curse should be the tongue that tells me so on the fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward! We'll have thee as our rarer monsters are. Painted on a pole and under it, here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's curse. Though Burnham would become to Judson Ain and now opposed. Being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. Lay on, Macduff, and damn to be. 